Um, the it wasn't always in the works. Uh, we were planning on making Kingsman three while shooting Kingsman two, and then I watched The Man Who Would Be King, and I, it just reminded me of everything that I fell in love with cinema for, and uh, decided let's make The Man Who Would Be Kingsman, and that came together quicker than I would ever imagine because I, you know, we had the storyline written in Kingsman 1 when Eggsy is speaking to Harry, or Harry even speaking to Eggsy, telling him the story of uh, how, how, why, and when Kingsman was founded. And uh, World War I obviously was written as well, so we just had to take the speech of Harry, take history, bring the things together, and I was lucky enough to then have a movie which I was desperate to go make, and we will make Kingsman 3 next. Well, hopefully uh, we make Kingsman 3 next, which concludes the story between Eggsy and Harry, and then we can get delved straight into the King's Man 2, or maybe we'll even call it the King's Men, so I can decide that. Um, and um, that will take the characters from here on their first journey as the Kingsman Agency is now founded. So we've got, in theory, decades now of history of real history, a secret history, the history of espionage shown through the eyes of the Kingsmen. So that will be this franchise. And then after um, the Eggsy and Harry story is concluded, there's a lovely ending, which would then make it a Kingsman 4 will become something that people probably couldn't imagine right now until they've seen Kingsman 3. And if those go well enough, we thought it'd be fun to do a Loki style spin-off of the Statesman, but do that as a TV slash streaming uh, offshoot of the Kingsman. But I've always imagined if it's got the name, the King's Man or Kingsman in the title, that's theatrical, and then spin-offs can be more of the streaming. I think it's more how does revisionist and unreal history weave into the real history, it would be my answer to that. Um, how does it fit in? It's shoehorned in. It's, uh, you know, we can't change history, we can't change facts, but we can find the gray area where people can't explain what happened or why it happened and just sneak a little bit of the Kingsman wink charm or uh, raised eyebrow into those scenarios. Yes, we did a lot of research for the, the whole of World War I and the trenches and uh, the more we got to, or the more I got to understand and see what the trenches were, the more shocking it was and sort of unbelievable, which then made us decide to build the trenches because I just felt a CG version of it would never capture the true horror of the place. Um, and we just decided to shoot it in, it's sort of ironic because, you know, I say we, we shot it in sort of the epic style that I, you know, as a kid I grew up on, but, you know, which was sort of the David Lean, John Huston style of, uh, you know, proper wide shots and long lenses and trying to use real, you know, obviously using extras, not sprites. Uh, but, um, and we just tried to capture, capture it in a way where it didn't, where it was accessible to a modern audience, but inspired by the old fashioned way of making movies, but not make, we didn't want to make an old fashioned film. I wanted to make a modern version of an old fashioned film. A story is a story. Um, so when you tell a story every, and you're true to the story, everything will fall into place around being honest to the story. So the action sequences we did, we based on the reality of the story and the characters that we were saying. So Rasputin, gave me the, the leeway to go a little bit more crazy, but we based it all on facts of how the ballet dancing, the Cossack dancing, Tchaikovsky, all these Russian influences we could put into him. But likewise, when Conrad goes to war, then I had to respect the storytelling and of going to war in World War I, so therefore it became more real and we shot the trenches as the trenches were. And then at the third act, we then looked at the 
what would happen? How do we do an action sequence with a biplane? When I found out that the, the biplanes back then were made out of canvas and virtually balsa wood, it seemed like that we could even virtually lift the whole thing up. Uh, I thought, so that gave me, gave me the idea of going through the wing and what that would look like spinning out of control. And then the whole mountain and the goats and the sword fighting, we just, we took those styles. I found an old, old sword that did have a gun built into it in a museum, I saw that um in Turin and we took all these uh these historical way you know things but then so okay how do we reinvent a sword fight put cameras onto the blades um and but also don't reinvent it go back to the old style of Errol Flynn and have some great sword fighting and be brave and keep the camera still uh and get the actors to learn how to do it so um so just to be, you know, so the answer is the balance came from being truthful to the story and the characters and then forging an action around that. Well, Ben Davis for me is, and his dad was sort of the king of long lens photography and, you know, David Lean and, you know, Lawrence of Arabia and these movies, they use sort of, it's quite interesting when you start using long lenses to do big wide shots. And, um, and uh, we even rebuilt some of the lenses from, from Lawrence of Arabia. And we didn't shoot it on film, but Ben and I, you know, we, we put the old lenses onto the modern cameras and we used a 65 chip, which, you know, it's sort of like the equivalent of a 70 mil, you know, negative. And it just, you know, the anamorphic on that, it, we then projected it and it, it, would, it created that epic old school look that we wanted the movie to have. Um, and, and, and we were just trying to be disciplined, you know, of, of just respecting how these old movies were made. And, and we watched them all and said, let's, you know, as, let's keep it in that language for as long as possible. Um, and then towards the end, it starts morphing a little bit more to the Kingsman way we shot things. But the first two acts, well, three, I think it's a four act structure. So the first three acts, we were far more epic adventure filmmaking. And then the fourth act got, got a little bit more Kingsman issue, you say. That's my main job as a director is to cast it properly. You know, uh, you cast any role correct, it doesn't matter. It, then the movie's gonna, you know, the movie will work. You know, you have to cast the role properly now i mean what i mean by that is there have been films where you put a movie star in a role but if they weren't right for that role it doesn't matter how big a movie star there are they are it doesn't work so i've always done that and um with the kingsman i needed my the who is that man that could play the king's man who could rival colin firth and be the you know for, you know who would colin firth have been channeling to play the Kingsman um, as we know it. And even then Taron Edgerton with, with uh, you know, with Eggsy, you know, what is this ethos? Where's the spirit coming from? And when we wrote the Kingsman, uh, you know, there was only two people in my mind who could play the role. One was David Niven, obvious reasons why he couldn't. Uh, and the second was Rafe Fiennes. So Rafe said yes and um, knocked it out of the park. And likewise, with all the other, like Rasputin, I knew Reese was the man. I, I, you know, I don't know why I did, but I knew Reese had the uh, the depth and sort of the the a a energy that he would bring to it, sort of a over the top realism. So that's why I cast him and and all the other characters. They all they all had a part. I try to cast people where a little bit of them is in the role. So they're, they're acting, but I know a bit of their core is going to add to the role. What can they expect? Um, I think what they can ex they can be surprised. They will go on an, or in an original film. You know, it, it's not a formulaic generic movie. It's epic. It's entertaining. It's engaging. It's exciting. And it's escapism. And it's, you'll also learn a little bit of, bit of, actually you'll learn a lot about history, at this, but it won't be boring.